हेलो एंड वेलकम टू आर ऑनलाइन क्लास ऑफ सोशल साइंस टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ हिस्ट्री दैट इज ट्राइबल्स डिकोज एंड द विजन ऑफ अ गोल्डन एज बिफोर स्टार्टिंग दिस चैप्टर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग ऑफ द टर्म ट्राइबल डिकोज and the vision of the golden age so here first word is tribal let me tell you tribal people here you can see tribal people are those people who live in the forest regions especially in the far flung areas here the term dikus refers to those people who are outsiders in this chapter this terminology dikus is used for the people who came to india from european countries and the vision of golden age this vision of the golden age we will discuss the dream of the people especially in munda tribal community so all these points we will discuss in this chapter step by step first of all let's see the content of this chapter in this chapter we will read introduction how did tribal groups live how did colonial rule affect tribal lives a closer look bisamunda these are the main topics of this chapter this content now let's discuss these topics step by steps in detail so in introduction of this chapter we will read about the tikus these dikus words this word refers to outsiders outsider here it refers the people who came from other nations especially european people among these europeans britishers who ruled in india from 1757 till 1947 so this terminology is mainly used for britishers this chapter is beginning with one famous leader of tribal community birsa munda and his lives that he lived in the forest regions of chhota nagpur in jharkhand birsa munda he declared that he had miraculous powers he could cure all the diseases and he had special powers given by the god Bissa Munda and his followers they fought against the dikus or these european people in india for their rights so first of all we have to understand that why birsa munda and other forest dwellers they fought with britishers what were the main reasons of his protest coming to the next slide here society tribal society and the condition of that society is discussed in this chapter that in 19th century tribal people they lived in 
forest regions they had their own customs and rituals these people had no interference from any of the princely state most of the tribal societies they had their own chiefs tribal people did shifting cultivation or jhum cultivation in their areas we will discuss in detail what is this shifting cultivation they practiced their own rituals and customs these people had trade relation with some neighboring states and before the arrival of britishers in their areas they lived happily coming to next point how did tribal groups live so their lifestyle and livelihood i will discuss here in this slide tribal people did jhum cultivation it is also called shifting cultivation in india this cultivation has different different names in different different areas generally this cultivation is also known as slash and burn here slash and burn refers that people of the forest regions they clear a patch of land by cutting the trees after cutting the trees they burn the trees of this region after burning of the trees that area gets potash to fertilize the soil by the use of their own tools they grow crops in that region although they do not use cultivators they simply throw seeds in these regions and wait for the rainfall after passage of time when these people use that land for two or three times four times five times they change that area and pro- adopt the same process of cutting the trees in other region too to make the previous land fertile they grow some new plants in that region people of these tribal areas they practice this jhum cultivation in that entire forest region reason is that they have enough land in the forest regions so first they cut one part one patch of the land then shift to another then they shift to another area and after 20 30 years they come back in the same land so they keep zooming they keep shifting from one place to another place that is why this cultivation is known as zoom cultivation coming to our next slide we have another example in this chapter 
about the Khonds, one of the tribal community. They also lived in forest regions of Odisha. These people were hunter gatherers. As we are talking about the 19th century, these people were hunter gatherers. They killed animals for their meat and they collected fruits and roots from the forest regions and they used sal and mahua seeds too for their oil. Sometimes these people use shrubs and herbs also to make the medicines of their local people. They supplied kusum and plus flowers to the dyers of that region who used to color their clothes and leather. One another important tribal community of this region which lived in central India is Baigas. Baigas are the people who lived in the central India. Community people believed that they are self-dependent. They did not take any kind of help from other communities. They believed that taking the help from other communities and doing labor job is below their dignity. That is why they did not do any work for others. They lived happily on the produce what they received from the forest regions only. Coming to our next slide, when we are talking that how these tribal people lived. So some herded animals, as we have discussed that some of the people did zoom cultivation. Another group was hunter gatherers, as we discussed about the cones. Some were herders, pastoralist community of that time. So here you can see we will discuss about these tribal communities who were herders. Among them one is Van Gurjars because these people moved from one place to another place in search of the pasture for their animals. When pasture got exhausted at one place due to extreme heat and cold they moved to another area. So when Gujars of Punjab they were the cattle herders. Labadis of Andhra Pradesh they were also cattle herders. Gedis of Kullu Manali this Himachal region they were shepherds and buckar walls, these are known as Gurjar buckar walls of Kashmir region, they reared goats. So these people lived their life in pasturing their animals. Some took to settled cultivation. As we have discussed, some are doing zoom cultivation, some are hunter gatherers, some are you can say traders, some settled themselves. Among the settled community, there was a community, tribal community, you can say who settled in the regions that was Mundas of Chota Nagpur. Chota Nagpur region or Jharkhand region, these Munda people they settled in the land that is belonged to them they begin to use 
हो प्लो इक्विपमेंट्स दे स्टार्टेड यूजिंग फॉर ग्रोइंग देयर एग्रीकल्चर दीज पीपल सेटल्ड इन दोज एरियाज एंड फेल्ट दैट नाउ देयर लाइफ इज हैप्पी बट आफ्टर द अराइवल ऑफ कॉलोनियल पीपल और ब्रिटिशर्स इन इंडिया देयर लाइफ चेंज इन दिस पैरा वी विल रीड हाउ डिड कॉलोनियल रूल अफेक्ट ट्राइबल लाइव सो फर्स्ट इज द एफेक्ट्स ऑफ द कॉलोनियल रूल ऑन ट्राइबल चीफ्स Before the arrival of European people or these Britishers, tribal tribal chiefs they enjoyed their powers. They were the head of that clan or that group, tribal group. Most of the functions of that tribe were organized under his leadership. They enjoyed all the powers. they could take the decision of that clan but after the arrival of britishers now these tribal chiefs could not take any decision they came under the control of the british government they lost their power and they were forced to follow the laws made by the british officials even they had to pay tribute to the british government so you can say that their life completely changed after the arrival of the britishers secondly what happened to the shifting cultivators shifting cultivators here it refers that people who were doing zooming agriculture or shifting agriculture or that slash and burn agriculture those who cut the forests and those who were growing their crops in those regions now after the arrival of colonial people after the arrival of britishers they were denied to do that shifting cultivations britishers they denied them to do any kind of trade in the forest regions even britishers told them that you will not burn the trees as it may cause forest fire these people who lived in the shifting cultivator cultivation they were declared criminal they were told that you will not stay inside the forests without permission now they could not do any hunting they could not do any trade even they were asked to leave these forest regions as britishers divided these forests into three categories reserved protected and village forests so their life completely changed they had no source of income ultimately these people left their areas and settled as a laborer in most of the another parts of the country here i'm talking about the forest laws and their impacts as britishers passed forest laws in india by their forest laws they divided forests into different different categories now in reserved forest protected forests indian people they were not allowed tribal people they could not stay inside their agriculture was banned their trade was banned their hunting was banned they could not collect firewood without the permission of the britishers they could not practice zoom cultivation they could not collect fruits and hunt animals in these areas many tribal people they were forced to move from 
that region to another region in search of the work and livelihood. Even Britishers established village forests. Here village forest refers to those forests where people of the tribal areas had to work free of cost. They had to cut trees for the Britishers. In lieu of that, they could stay inside the forests and could collect firewood. So this was very poor indication for these tribal people and their livelihood. They faced problems in their trade. Now they could not sell their items outside, even they could not collect honey, they could not get horns of the animals, skin of the animals, even silk and other items were also denied in these regions. Because Santhal people they reared cocoons. When Britishers came they denied them to do so and the middlemen who approached with these people they asked them to sell their items at very very cheap rate. So in simple words you may say that their trade completely declined. In search of the work people of these tribal regions moved from one area to another area. They settled themselves in most of the industries as a laborer. They worked in the plantation farms and started working in coal minings of Jharkhand region. It completely affected the life of the tribal people. Tribal people here it refers the people of the forest region. Now a closer we will have the last pair of this chapter in which we will discuss about the rebellions as when Britishers imposed many laws on these forest people, people got agitated and they took arms in their hands against the British government. That time many revolts and rebellions took place. The first rebellion was in 1831 to 32 that was Cole's rebellion then Santhal's they also revolted under Siddhu Erkanu in 1855 in Bastar region of Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand region rebellions rebellion took place in 1910 in Worli also Maharashtra this rebellion took place in 1940 and Mundas they revolted in the Jharkhand region in late 19th century and first decade of 20th century. So here we will discuss about the Munda rebellion under the leadership of Birsha Munda. Birsa Munda, we had discussed about Birsa Munda in the first para of the chapter that he was the leader of the tribal people of Jharkhand. Birsa, he talked about the golden age when the Mundas had been free of the operation of the Dikus and said there would be a time when the ancestral rights of the community would be restored. Means Munda Birsa Munda he believed that the life before the arrival of these dikus or the outsiders was good. Tribal community of this Jharkhand region they were free to collect the fuel, they were free to live inside the forest, they could enjoy their life, they could do cultivation, hunting and all the things. Birsa went to local missionary schools for education. He learnt ceremonies of the missionaries. He also 
accompanied with some prominent Vaishnav preachers of that time. He wore sacred thread and began the value of the importance of the purity and pity. He had ideas for the tribal society. He urged the Mundas, he requested Mundas to give up their drinking of liquor, clean their villages, stop believing in witchcraft and sorcery. He believed that people must live a simple life. In 1895, he urged his followers to recover the glory past and to bring a vision of golden age. In the golden age, he believed that we must bring a satyug, a age of truth. All the Munda people must live a good life. He believed that they must involve themselves in the construction of the embankments of, or the bridges. He believed in tap of the natural springs, motivated people to plant more and pre more and more trees and orchards or the gardens. He asked them to practice cultivation and earn their livelihood. He asked Munda people not to kill their brethren and relatives means their own people and taught them to live honestly, live on their land and settle down in those regions and cultivate their fields. This was his vision of the golden age which he believed that it must be practiced. When these British people came, they occupied their regions. They forced Munda people to leave their occupation. They denied them to enter in the forest regions. Ultimately, these Munda people revolted under the leadership of Birsa Munda. Birsa Munda became leader of these tribal people. He is worshipped in these regions nowadays. He believed that these dikus, outsiders, are responsible for the miserable condition of the people. That's why he took arms in his arms and ammunition, bows and arrows in his hand. Because British policies destroyed their traditional life, ultimately Birsa Munda and his followers, followers they started criticizing their British policies and their culture. Because of this attitude, he was arrested in 1895 and convicted him on charge of writing and he was jailed for two years. After two years in 1897, when he came back, he visited most of the villages in that area and gathered people against the Dikus or these Europeans. He also gave the term Ravana for them. Birsa and his followers targeted these Dikus, these European people. They attacked on the police stations, churches. They attacked on moneylenders, zamindars, and they used white flag as the symbol of Birsa Raj. Although, after a passage of time, after three years in 1900, Birsa Munda died of cholera, one of the disease. And this movement, this protest which he started, that faded, that faded out. But this movement or revolt had lot of impact on the life of 
ट्राइबल पीपल एज ब्रिटिशर्स दे गेव सम रिलेक्सेशंस टू द पीपल नाउ दे रियलाइज दैट दे शुड नॉट फोर्स द ट्राइबल पीपल अदरवाइज दे मे रिवोल्ट एनी टाइम सो हियर टू पॉइंट्स आर गिवन इन दिस चैप्टर दैट इट फोर्स द ब्रिटिशर्स टू इंट्रोड्यूस द न्यू लॉज ऑन द लैंड एंड दे डिसाइडेड दैट नाउ दे हैव टू गिव सम रिलेक्सेशन सो दैट दैट ट्राइबल पीपल दे कुड लिव हैप्पीली सेकेंडली दिस रिवोल्ट शोड वंस अगेन दैट द ट्राइबल पीपल दे हैड कैपेसिटी unity to fight against the britishers against injustice and against these colonial people so britishers they changed their policies and attitudes towards these tribal people because of munda revolt and the efforts of birsa munda i hope that you understood this chapter if you like it then share and subscribe channel thank you very much